Hello, and welcome to my channel. You might have noticed that most of the stories in my channel took place in a city called Mark's Main City. Like many other cities, it also has its own share of rich and poor people. But the fancy houses of the rich don't always ensure happiness for the people inside it. No one can tell what's really happening behind those closed doors. This story is about an ordinary plumber who discovered one of Mark's main city's darkest secrets in the basement of an intelligent and wealthy man. Like several previous stories in this channel, this story is told from the first person point of view. Now, let's begin our story. I was a plumber for eight years. Some say it's a dirty job but it was enough to put food on the table. I'm not saying that there weren't any problems, but there wasn't anything that I couldn't handle. What I really liked about being a plumber is that I could get inside rich people's houses. Even if they were protected by strong gates or expensive security system, if they saw me knocking at the front gate, they would open the gates and turn off the security system. It was as if they were welcoming the president himself. Among my customers, I remember there was this big house with at least a dozen CCTVs. The house was owned by a middle-aged man who was always seen wearing a lab jacket. I kind of forgot his real name. I only nicknamed him Mr. Daly. I remember I saw his name card lying on the front desk. And I saw his last name which was daily. He was my last customer. I'll tell you why in a minute. One morning, I received a call from Mr. Daly. He asked me to come to his house. Well, actually, he ordered me to come. He wanted me to fix his kitchen sink. With him, it was always the kitchen sink. I didn't mind, though. I needed the money anyway. I arrived at his house around 2 p.m. Mr. Daly's house was located a bit far from the other houses. One could say that he was a man who valued his privacy. He was also the kind of man who valued his security. If there is one thing I remember about Mr. Daly's house was that he had a lot of CCTVs. I admit I was curious about why he had so many of them, but I never had the courage to ask. When I arrived, I saw two cameras at the porch, staring at me. I pressed the doorbell and waited. Not long after that, a man came out of the house, wearing a shabby lab coat. Mr. Daly was a typical scientist, with round glasses and thin hair on the top of his head. He was a skinny man, and he always looked tired. Please, come in, he said. I went inside, following him to the kitchen while carrying my toolbox. I saw two cameras at the living room. One near the bathroom door, one on the stairs, and one more at the dining room. I swear, he was either eccentric or just plain paranoid. It's the usual problem, he said to me when he arrived in the kitchen. The water is clogged, again. There must be something in the pipe, and I don't have time to take care of it. I am a scientist, and scientists work in a lab, not in the kitchen. I smiled. Sure, I said to him. No problem. Mr. Daly may be a scientist, but he was an arrogant one. He was also a messy one. The reason why the kitchen sink was often clogged was because of the food leftovers in the pipe. I'm not a scientist, but even I know that leftovers belong in the trash can. Okay, now I gotta get back to work, said Mr. Daly. He then walked to a door not far from the kitchen. It was a black colored door with a sign that says, Do not enter, hanging at the front. Just knock the door and you're done, he said. He opened the door and went inside, 
down the stairs. I came to this house too often to know that he had a lab in the basement. Judging from his shabby lab coat and his tired face, he must have spent a lot of time down there. I never knew what he was really doing. I asked him once, but he ignored my question. After that, I didn't want to ask any further. My business was with the pipes and nothing else. I didn't want to waste too much time there, so I started doing my job. Mr. Daly's house was always quiet. He never had any pets, at least I didn't know of. There weren't any photos of him, just a couple of small paintings about mountains and rivers. He was a bit of a loner, and you can tell a lot about a person from the interior of his house. Ten minutes after I started working, the lab door suddenly opened. I got startled and turned around. I saw Mr. Daly walked out from the door. Little rascals, he shouted. I saw his right hand covering his right eye, and there was a red stain on his lab coat. He rushed to the stairs and went to the second floor, leaving me alone in the kitchen. I saw the lab door half opened, which was a rare thing to see. Mr. Daly always kept it closed and locked, and he carried the keys in his pocket. Either way, I was always curious about what he was doing. When I was a kid, I always thought that laboratories were filled with colorful chemicals and live animals in cages. At that moment, I had the opportunity to see what the real lab is like. I put my tools down and walked toward the door. I glanced at the top floor and Mr. Daly was nowhere to be seen. I continued to open the door and saw some stairs down to the basement. I descended slowly down the stairs and found a spacious room with minimal lighting. I saw some computer consoles and a big glass cabinet filled with liquid chemicals and some other lab equipment that was unknown to me. When I tried to explore, at the end of the room, I noticed that there was some kind of a glass wall. There was something behind it, but I couldn't be sure what it was. When I tried to walk closer, the light suddenly turned on. It was probably one of those automatic lamps that can detect our presence, but at that moment, I wasn't really concerned about the lights. I could finally see what was behind the glass wall. There were three girls sitting on the floor. Their body was covered with large black cloth. Each of them had long black hair that fell all the way to their chest. They were sitting quietly as if they didn't notice my presence. Most of their faces were covered by their long hair, but I could faintly see their pale skin. I was completely shocked to see the sight in front of me. I could only think of one reason why Mr. Daly would have little girls in his basement. It must be because he was a pedophile. He kidnapped little girls and put them in a glass cage for his own pleasure. For a moment, I felt a strong hatred toward him. What the hell are you doing? A voice suddenly shouted. I turned and saw Mr. Daly aiming a gun at me. He was standing at the stairs. There was a big band-aid above his right eye. I felt my heart starting to beat faster and a surge of adrenaline flowing under my skin. Some pretty girls you got there. I tried talking to him while also suppressing my fear. Did you adopt them or did you put sleeping pills in their ice cream? He smiled. What do you know about science? He scoffed at me. All you know is fixing the kitchen sink. Then he started babbling about the history of Mark's main city. According to him, long ago, the city was once a dark and savage land. But the land wasn't empty. It was inhabited by creatures that had existed since the time of the dinosaurs. When humans arrived in the land, a bloody battle ensued which resulted in the creature's defeat. They were forced to retreat 
to the caves and mountains. The creatures retreated, but they never left. They let the humans build their homes on their land while they observed from the darkness. As the city grew bigger, they started sneaking into the city, inhabiting the empty and abandoned houses of humans. Sometimes they would prey on the unwary humans that entered their territory, ensuring the safety of their lair and the fullness of their bellies. Slowly, the creatures began to evolve. They slowly adapt themselves to the human world. Their bodies became smaller and more human-like. This allowed them to move freely in the dark alleys. It was never easy to find them, let alone capture them. Mr. Daly claimed that he was the only person who managed to capture them alive by using live human bait. The creatures have no official name, but they nicknamed them the Freaks, anagram of Freaks. I knew that he was smart, but I never expected him to be delusional. I didn't believe any of his words. At that time, the only thing on my mind was to free those poor little girls. Unintentionally, my set fell on a row of buttons on her console next to me. One of those buttons had a green color and the word containment written on it. Don't you dare touch that console, he yelled at me. I ignored him and moved my body as fast as I could toward the button. I heard a gunshot in the air and felt a sharp pain in my left shoulder. I fell on the floor, but my hand managed to press the button. I heard a buzzing sound coming from the walls, and I saw the glass wall rise to the ceiling. You idiot! Do you realize what you've done? Mr. Daly yelled in desperation. I didn't care what would happen to me. Those girls were free. It was all that mattered. I saw those three girls standing up, and they were actually taller than I thought they'd be. The black cloth on their body suddenly opened, and they turned out to be wings that resembled bat wings. Their mouths suddenly opened, revealing sharp white teeth. From their mouths came a terrible loud scream. The sound was almost deafening, and I tried to close my ears with my hands. The three creatures that moved like a flash passed over me and immediately attacked Mr. Daly. I heard Mr. Daly scream in pain. The creatures were merciless. Several gunshots were heard, but they all missed. It was probably hard to aim when you were being chewed alive. Finally, Mr. Daly stopped screaming, and I could see his body lying there in his own pool of blood. The creatures stood up and turned their heads toward me. On their faces, I didn't see any eyes or noses. I only saw big mouths covered in blood. They just stood there staring at me. I couldn't remember how long, but it felt like hours to me. Finally, the three of them left the basement. I saw them running up the stairs, dragging Mr. Daly's body. I didn't want to follow them. I was still frozen in fear. A few moments later, I felt the pain in my left shoulder again. At that moment, the first thing that came to my mind was to leave the place as soon as possible. I grabbed my tools, got in my car, and went to the nearest hospital. On that day, I stopped being a plumber. Two years have passed since that incident. I am now the owner of my own coffee shop. It's a small one, but I'm really liking it. The best part about this job is that I get to meet new people and hang out with old friends. My job right now is much better than being a plumber. But that doesn't mean that I've forgotten about Mr. Daly. I never came back to his house. I didn't know what happened to his body. One thing that scares me the most is that his words are true. We are not alone in this city. I am one of the few people who knows his secrets, but until now, I couldn't bring myself to tell anyone about it. I don't have solid proof, 
And besides, do you really think people would believe that there are monsters living among us? I don't think so. After what happened at Mr. Daly's place, I became somewhat of a different man. I became traumatized and scared of the dark. But deep down, I still try to be grateful because I'm still alive. Hopefully, someday I can be free from my fears. But until then, I have to learn to live together with the creatures that hide in the darkness. The things that killed Mr. Daly are still out there. And I pray every night so that they will come and get me in my sleep. And so, the story ends here. Like all other cities, Mark's main city has its own secrets. The plumber knew about it, but he kept it to himself. The one lesson we could learn from him is that, although he still lives in fear, he is still trying to live his life to the fullest. Although life is hard, we must never stop trying our best. That is all for now. I will see you soon with another story. Thank you for watching.